In this video, I'm going to be retrofitting bi-xenon projector lenses to my E39 5 series. Over time, projector headlight lenses can develop fog inside the actual lens itself, which is why I'm doing this upgrade. And the first step is just to take the headlight out so we can start disassembling it. Once everything's unplugged, you can remove the four 8mm screws holding the headlight in place. And just take note, the top two screws are a coarse thread and the bottom two screws are a regular thread. Before we can remove the lens, we have to remove the two T10 Torx screws at the edge of the light near the indicator. Then we just need to work our way around the perimeter of the seal with a heat gun. You can use a hair dryer, but a heat gun will be a lot faster just because it generates more heat. Obviously, be careful not to melt any of the plastic. I'm just going back and forth between heating the butyl sealant and then prying it apart with the flathead screwdriver slowly. A lot of people put headlights in the oven to open them up and you can get a really good result doing this, but I'd only recommend it if you have a separate oven only for this kind of job. You don't want to be putting this headlight in an oven you're eating from as well. With the last of the butyl broken free, we can remove the headlight lens and get to work disassembling the internals. If your headlight adjuster rods are in good condition, you're going to have to pull the unit quite hard to break it off of the ball and socket joints and they might break in the process, so have the spare part ready, which I'll show you in a second. Because mine are already broken, it's really easy and just slides out. So these are the headlight adjuster rods and they're supposed to look like this. They have a ball socket joint between this and the projector housing and they just break over time. Now if you're doing this job, they are probably broken. It's a good idea to pick a set of these up, it's about 20 bucks. Even if they're not broken, they probably will break when you pull the headlight projector housing out because you have to pop it off all three of these joints. The bottom one's usually okay, the top two usually break. So get a set of this just as precaution. You don't have to be waiting for that to be delivered while these are open. Use an eight millimeter socket to unwind the two adjusters until all the plastic remnants fall off. Then it's just a reverse of the same process to fit the new headlight adjustment rods. Just spin the dials clockwise until they're seated properly. Finally, we can remove the projector unit itself. If you have auto leveling headlights like me, it'll be held on with four 7mm nuts. And if you've got manually leveling headlights, it should be three, but the concept is the same. You'll most likely have broken bits of plastic inside the socket end of the adjusters as well, which you can usually break loose with some pliers and a flathead screwdriver. While the headlights are apart, I'm painting the trim around the projector gold to match a couple other details on my car like the brake calipers and the pinstripe, but obviously this is to personal taste and doesn't need to be painted. I lost one of the bushings on the mounting post and I had to replace it with this grommet, but it seemed to work fine. 
And now the new projector lens can go in place with the logo facing up, that is with the logo on the flat side of the trim and not the curved side. There's plenty of butyl still in the ceiling channel of the headlight, but I'm laying a new band of it all the way around the perimeter just to make sure there's no moisture ingress. And I will just note quickly, these are new headlight lenses I fitted a couple months before this, which is why they look so clean and perfect. If you're doing this job, it's probably worth doing that at the same time. I got the lenses as a pair for 75 bucks on eBay. They fit perfectly. I've had no issues with the leaks and they look really good. So I think it's definitely worth it. Use the heat gun again when you're closing the headlight back up to make sure that the butyl is sealed all the way around. And you might need to use it to bend the tabs into place properly as well as they can warp a little bit with the heat. Now the xenon bulbs can be installed and you might find you need pliers to snap the retainer ring on. I don't think you're supposed to but that was just my experience. This particular kit from Retrofit Lab is plug and play, but you have to specify which type of plug you need for the kit, and I picked the wrong type, so I'm just hardwiring it. The main headlight plug and the high beam splitter, which is what I'm wiring in here, are still removable. I don't have to cut anything to take the headlight out. The last step of the installation is mounting the ballast and I'm attaching it to the grounding point on each side of the engine bay. This makes the setup symmetrical and means I don't have to drill any new holes. Now just for honesty's sake, I do want to make a quick disclaimer. The headlights look nuclear powered in this video and that's just down to my camera. They aren't this insanely bright in real life, but what is accurate is the color, the precision of the high beam cutoff, and of course they are probably at least five times better than what was in the car. They're worth every penny in my opinion and they look great.